Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar of the month. Today, we are talking about how to recession-proof your marketing game plan. This is a presentation I gave to the National Kitchen and Bath Association, one of the chapters here locally, and also a few other chapters. So uh, let's get started. So we have a workbook here that you can download. Just use this QR code here and you can download the workbook. Or if you are watching on the replay, you could just hit pause here so you could get access to the workbook. We have this code also at the end if you miss it as well. All right. So what we're going to talk about here with the topics, we're going to talk about uh, the impact that a recession has on business plans to survive a recession and then the trends to recession proof your business. With a recession, what often happens is that most businesses aggressively slash their spending and mo more than likely that happens on the marketing side. That's one of the first things that's often cut is the marketing and any PR that is happening. That is uh, one of the first things that is often cut. But what you should do is use the data to drive what is happening and where you need to cut back. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today on how you can assess that and really know where you need to organize everything so you can get the most out of your marketing in any of these types of uh, situations. The impacts of a recession on a business. It ultimately has reduced profits because you don't have as many purchases happening during a recession. You may have people that are not uh, that are holding on to, uh, to their funds and then in the design industry, they're not doing as many designs as they used to do in the past. So you don't have as many jobs or clients happening during this time. So with that, you have a reduced cash flow. And you have to, as the business owner, be mindful of what's happening on your side and what you spend your money on. So you may have to be a little uh, more stringent on what you spend your money on. And then you have a decline in product quality. Oftentimes, manufacturing slows down. And, and when you have that happen, bills get unpaid, and then the quality may be hindered as well. So that's something that's happening at a larger scale. Slumping sales, which ties into the reducing of the profits and then the credit card. So those are all aspects that happen during a normal recession. Now, we may or may not be in one. We have a lot of experts saying we are, we're headed there, whatever. But regardless, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today will help you. So where you want to start is the data. You want to have a data driven strategy. And that is to help you understand where you need to save, because like I said, what often happens when a recession happens, business owners start to cut. And sometimes they cut aspects that they really need without actually looking at the data that's saying, okay, where am I getting the most bang from my buck? Where can I save and where can I cut back without having to cut off my nose to spite my face, as the saying goes. So make sure the information that you use to make drastic cuts is all driven by the day or the data. Okay. And then these are just some examples here. So marketing budgets will decrease. That happens oftentimes, like I said, it's a knee-jerk reaction when recessions happen. Marketing is one of the first things to be cut when oftentimes, oftentimes marketing is where you need to put more emphasis on. Because in one of the podcasts we had, you had Miriam talk about she worked for Kohler. Heard was one of was a proponent for when a recession happens. He'll double down on marketing because he would get a larger market share. When others were cutting back, he was putting more money into marketing, and that's why Kohler has the name it has now because of all the emphasis he put on during the downtimes or recession or downturn in the economy, he put more money into marketing and PR. So he was able to grow his name over that time span. So looking at your data to see, is marketing really working? And what aspect of marketing? Uh, there's a lot of aspects that we talk about. You have search engine optimization, SEO, you have pay-per-click, you have social media, you have email marketing, you have video. Are you looking at all the aspects of the marketing that you are doing? 
not only digital, but offline print. If you're doing any billboards, anything like that, look in and start to analyze what is working and what is not. And that'll help you determine. New customer segments. This is where you can look at any new strategies that may be happening and what is happening with your own consumer base and with your client team and what's happening there. And then you can look at some options here that we talked about. But where are you maybe missing the boat, not hitting that gap that you can fill in? All right. Digital marketing. Now, we had talked about also that marketing is not just with the search engine optimization. You also have print and all. But are you using digital marketing correctly? So there are a lot of people that are really not. They are using social media, but they are not doing SEO. They're not doing pay per click. They're not using social media the right way not doing email marketing. Now, you don't have to do all of these. And I'm not trying to say you need to do all these unless you have a marketing agency or an in-house marketing team. If you're a one man or one woman shop, you only have so much time in the day. But you should be strategically using some type of marketing, digital and or offline to help propel, build your brand and get clients in the door asking about you, getting prospects to reach out to you. And so digital marketing and then the brand that you use and, and the type of digital marketing strategy that you use can help or hurt if you're not doing it at all. And then the nice to have. This is where, especially in the design industry, and if you're in interior design, remodeling, some aspects of architecture, a lot of what we do is a nice to have. A lot of the homeowners or consumers do not need to have what we offer in terms of doing a remodel. It's something that they'll like to have. It's a nice to have. So when this happens, one of the strategies we actually talk about is helping and creating content around the DIY, around the do-it-yourself. And that is creating content to help out the DIYers or the people that would like to have your services, but it's not the right time for them. And if they could do small things here and there, and you can build yourself as an expert in that, whatever that realm is, now when they're ready, they know who to reach out to because you help them on that aspect. And so obviously they're going to turn to you when they're ready. The next one is cash flow forecast. This is about making sure your finances are in place and that you have adequate cash flow for what you need to have done. Getting your cash flow in order is imperative. And this should, like we had on the last slide, this shouldn't happen just when a recession takes place or a downturn in the economy happens. But you need to look at cash flow and what's happening in terms of the financial aspect on a continuous basis. You need to look at your estimated sales, the timing of your payments and your expenses. Looking at all these aspects helps you to see the health of your business and what's working, what's not where you need to cut back, where you need to do more of, what are the good and bad aspects of the finances that you really need to get in order. This is where you should also have some help from either a CPA, an accountant of some type that uh, should be able to help you iron all of this out as well if everything is not in place. Take stock of your talent. What often happens is that there's a hiring freeze and the talent and your employees or your key personnel feels that crunch because they are now having to do more with less. So you're oftentimes putting more on them than they're used to because you're not wanting to hire anybody new in that time. So you're having to stretch out your current employee base and you want to be mindful of that and you want to be a good leader and engage with your team to make sure that you're not putting too much on them to burn them out or have them start to look for other opportunities. So make sure you're taking stock of your talent, that you're not putting too much on them at this time. Look at management aspects that you can use in terms of how do you increase productivity without putting too much strain on your current employee base. Look at growth opportunities. Actually, talk with your employees, talk with your staff about, OK, we may have this happening now, but once this is over or as we get out of this, 
what are the growth opportunities you have? And by me handing you these extra tasks, this will allow you to grow in the company in XYZ ways. Offering continuous learning opportunities, this helps to improve in terms of the employee's value. They feel more valuable to the place where they work. They feel like they're growing their own skill base and that helps to retain. And then are you having high performance with your current employees? And if not, you need to talk to them and understand why, meet them where to see what may be the holdup from having them reach that top potential. And then how do you start to reach out and target that top talent that you may not have now or that you're trying to go after? And that this may be a, a way for you to really look at your own hiring process and what you have out there in terms of a job as Virtus Man and try to relook at that to see how can you get that top talent in. So once this is all over, you can go after them. And analyzing the people, future decision making is all what can be happening right now. Focusing on client experience. The best businesses know that happy clients give you great reviews and spread the word quickly. And we all know in the design industry that referrals is one of the best clients that we can get because when we are referred by a happy client, work that we did for them to refer us other clients. So the client experience, and we did a a number of podcasts on this. So listen to designer discussions podcast where we talk about enhancing the client experience. I'm going to be high level here, but listen to that about how you can enhance that. But you want to ensure that you're providing quality products and services to your client and that they're experiencing it and that the interaction that they're having with your staff, going back to what we just talked about, ensuring that your employees are happy and they're delivering your clients a great experience. That entail helps you to grow your brand, especially during these downtimes, whether we're in it or not, that helps to grow your brand. And making sure that the client experience is top-notch. This is what you also need to be working on and improving as best you can, all right? Now, these are some tips here on how to recession-proof your game plan. We had talked just a little bit about some of the outcomes that happens during the downturn. Now we're gonna talk about how to proactively enhance and recession-proof your game plan. Number one is to leverage and optimize your website. Invest in your website. What I hear a lot of times from designers is that they have a website, but they really haven't invested in it or optimized it or did any changes to it in years. So you have a website that has been developed, but at the same time, there isn't anything up to date. So you have older projects. And what happens is that when you're trying to go after your ideal client and you don't have your best projects up there, Now they're looking at old work that you may have done that does not really represent your brand the right way. So making sure your website is up to date is vital. We're going to have a session on this next month. That's going to be the webinar of the month. Next month is to talk about how to optimize your website. But high level here, you just want to make sure that that website is optimized for your ideal client, that you have your most recent projects that you make sure all of the content on your site is relevant to what you're doing now, not what happened years ago, and that is optimized for search. So doing search engine optimization, there are some aspects that you can do in-house without having to hire an outside agency, but making sure that the images, that you have alt tags for the images, that is just not the image, but you actually have something written in there that you have all of your page titles. And we're going to get into all of this next month when we talk about website and how to optimize it. But at a high level, just make sure that your website is up to date and you have some aspects of your most current work that shows your business in the right way. These are just some of the basic website fundamentals and how you want to set up your website, logo, clear description, Make sure it's mobile optimized, having links, a call to action, and the main navigation. This is a QR code to get access to the training 
now that training we had did a couple months ago, like I said, we're going to do a new webinar next month and it's going to enhance what, uh, what you'll see on that webinar. But if you want to get access, use that QR code so you can see what we uh, produced a couple months ago. But like I said, next month, we're going to do a revised training on how to optimize your website. Creating a blog, that's a great way for SEO, search engine optimization, but also creating relevant content that has your end user or the homeowner or the consumer find you by other terms or other keywords. And that's also showing your expertise by creating content that puts you in, in the light of being an expert in the world. So creating blogs is, and even if you do it once a month, that's better than nothing at all because you're creating consistent content and that's having the search engines know that you have a relevant site and you are contributing to the content that's out there. Next, building your email capabilities. Now, a lot of people and designers say that email is dead. I would say that they're using email the wrong way. There's a lot of spam out there. There's a lot of email spam out there. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your email is adding value to your end user, to your ideal client. So your email marketing needs to connect with your end user on a personal level. So, and how do you do that? You need to understand your client. Look at our podcast, episode six on designer discussions. And then we have an exercise in there on identifying your ideal client. That's where you want to create that client avatar. And then as you reverse engineer, now you can create content that will resonate with them. And that also translates to the email. And then once you create email that adds value to them, now they're more apt to open share, and pass it on to others, okay? Growing your email subscriber list is good, and that's what you want to try to do during these times. But one of the best ways to do that is to understand your client, like we just talked about with the client avatar, and then when you're creating content that resonates with them, that has them share it, and then they're, then they're sharing it with people that are interested, and they're more apt to join your list. And having an opt-in, on your website, having some place where they can join your website or having something where you have a free download. Those are great ways to add more people onto your email list. And automating the process helps makes everything more efficient and more cost effective. So making sure that you're using an email service provider like a MailChimp or a Constant Contact or a web or, or whatever they are, but using their paid tools and not just the free tools by using the paid tools, you get access to more of the automation that lessens your workload and has you put more time into what you're doing as opposed to focusing on email and marketing. Now you're automating a lot of the process so you're not having to spend the time or your team's time to do a lot of the mundane work, but the automation does that for you. So choosing the right platform is key. There was an analysis done by HubSpot, and it revealed that two out of every three clients made their purchases as a result of a direct marketing email they received from the company. That research also shows that email marketing is 40 times more effective than Twitter and Facebook combined. So what that is saying is that, like I said at the start, email is not dead. You're just using it the wrong way. And so you want to ask yourself, okay, what are you trying to achieve by sending out the emails, who the audience is? What do you want the readers to do after reading your emails that call to action, CTA, as we call it in the marketing realm? And what metrics are you going to track? And then developing your email list, looking at current clients, past clients, offering some type of free offer. You can buy a list using social media and have an opt-in form on your website. That helps. In terms of the list, you want to make sure that you have, like I like to say, the 80-20 rule, 80% value, 20% self-promotion. And that's going to help you generate that email open rates and increase that and really get the email working the right way. This is also a QR code for an email marketing webinar, an NKBA CEU that we did. Download that. Uh, look at that. It's an hour-long training where we go over how to email what you need to send, how often you need to send. It's a whole lot in there. So take a look at that as well. Optimize Google ad spending. Now, if you're not spending money on Google ads, this may or may not 
just may not apply to you. But if you are spending money on Google ads, you really need to look at how you're spending ads because you may be wasting some of your ad budget on ad spend with either Google, Facebook, Yelp, or whoever. Take a look at what is and what is not working. So you want to look at what that advertising dollar is having and what is working and what is not. Oftentimes, by adding in negative keywords or adding in terms, that lets the search engine know you're not looking for that and don't waste my click on X, Y, Z. So looking at your ads campaign to see what campaigns are doing well, what campaigns are not, and turning those off and optimizing the, uh, the ones that are working to really hone in on, on to get that click-through rate higher and more quality. That's what it's all about. Just some of the PPC tips we have is just not setting only one ad group. And that's what I talked about, not just having one ad group, having multiple ad groups so you can see do A-B tests to see if A works or B works and then turning off the one that does not work and optimizing the one that does so you can enhance that click-through rate. Not using specific tech ad, text ads and landing pages, directing them to the website, okay? So if you directing them just to your website overall, you may have them go into a whole lot of information that is overwhelming as opposed to creating a landing page that ties in directly to what you were offering them. So if you have an ad that talks about bathroom remodel, but you send them to your homepage of your website, but it has all of this information about who you are, all these different project types, all the different services, that may be information overload. They may have paralysis by analysis and move on. So if you have a landing page that just talks about bathroom remodels, then they're finding the exact information they want and now they're more apt to click through and go to where you want them to go and take the action that you want them to take. And that is talk about the action, the CTA, the call to action. So what is it that you want them to do? Making sure it's clear that once they are on that page, whether it's website, landing page, that is clear what you want them to do. Do you want them to take an action in terms of calling you, sending in a form, whatever that is? What is that, what is that CTA, that call to action? Making sure it's clear, okay? Brand positioning on social media. Trim the access on social media to focus where it matters most and optimize your process. So social media is challenging as it is. As we all know there's a lot of platforms out there. You have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, on and on and on. But making sure that you understand why you're using the platform the way you use it is vital. Okay. The majority of traffic by brands on social media is now through paid advertising. So this is because companies like Facebook and Twitter are adjusting their algorithm to minimize the visibility of posts made by brands unless they are engaged in paid advertising. So that's important because a lot of times when you post, you're confused by why nobody is really engaging with posts. And that's because only a small percentage, less than 5%, of your overall audience is seeing what you post. So you're having to pay for a lot of that. Going back to where we talk about ad spend, making sure that when you pay to either boost a post or do ads, making sure it's done strategically and that you're looking at the back end data to do the post the right way. So you're reaching your audience and not just out there in the internet sphere and it's not really hitting the right target audience. Because like I always say, if you're marketing to everybody, you're actually marketing to them. One of the things you want to do is you want to do an analysis of your competition. This is a great way for you to understand what is working and what is not. We do this for all of our clients. One of the first things we do on social media is look at the list of competitors. We uncover what they're doing right or wrong. We build a profile of all of this. So now we can analyze it and turn that into actionable steps. And so that's about us understanding where the gaps are. We're doing a gap analysis to see what is the competition doing right? How are they resonating with their audience? And what can we do for our clients to have them also resonate with, with their ideal client? And that's what you can do on your own end by 
understanding what the competition is doing right or wrong. Now you can create content or you can create posts or videos or whatever it may be that resonate with your end user and you're filling the gap and making sure that you reach them where they are and providing the value that they want. And now you're now you have a better chance of your content resonating. And you can find out more. Uh, we did a YouTube video on this. This is all about how to really have your social media be relevant for your end users. Tracking tools. This is very important. I hear all the time from designers that they are not really tracking the results and un understanding what's working and what's not. By using backend analytics tool, you can confirm that you're actually seeing growth. This will allow you to tell if the marketing strategies that you're using are working. A lot of times what happens is that you either do marketing in-house or you hire a marketing agency, but they are not letting you know the data. And you need to know the data. You need to understand the data so you can know what's working and what's not. And there's a lot of tools out there that you could use in terms of type of marketing assets that you use with social media. You have Hootsuite. And there's others out there besides that for tracking leads. You have analytics. This is a free tool. Now, Google Analytics, Google Search Console needs to be on your website because it gives you a lot of information about where the visitors are coming from, what they're looking at, how long are they staying on your site, what is popular, what's, resonate, what's resonating with them and what's not. So having Google, Google Analytics and Google Search Console on your website is vital. It's a free tool. You need to put that on there today. Okay. Email marketing. There's a tool there. Predator research, digital advertising. These are just some of the tools. There's a lot of other tools. Some are free, some are paid, but make sure you have some type of tracking tool so you can understand what's working and what's not in your marketing. Build your internal marketing muscle by bringing things in house. Outsourcing your digital marketing can be expensive. There are marketing agencies and we are one and we handle a lot of the marketing for our clients, but it can be expensive and not everybody can afford what we do. But if you're going to bring it in-house, make sure a lot of the steps we talked about before where you're analyzing the content, where you're analyzing the competition, where you're tracking the analytics to see what's working, what's not. Make sure that your website is up to date. Use all of these tools to enhance what is happening in your business. And so that helps you to be able to bring marketing in-house and then handle it the right way. If you have the funds to be able to hire, we are one of the agencies that can help. There are many out there. But look at help either, whether it be us or somebody in your local community or whoever it may be, but make sure they understand the industry and they're following a lot of the steps that we talk about in terms of analyzing, tracking, optimizing. So you can get the bang for your buck and you can see a ROI at the end of the day because we want to ensure whether you're doing it on your own or we're doing it or it's another agency that you're getting the most out of your marketing spend. So you can turn a lot of that spent marketing into business that will help you get out of whether we're in a recession or not. It will help you see and improve your day to day operations and improve your and enhance your business. Okay. Feel free to look at our resource library. We have a lot of information, free information that you can get access to in terms of videos, training, articles. We have step-by-step -step guides. It's a lot of free information we have. They also have a book that lays out our whole process. There are 12 chapters in there. Each chapter goes over a different medium, whether it be web design, social media, search engine optimization, pay-per-click, email marketing, video. Each chapter deals with a different topic that helps you enhance your market. Get access to the book. Look at our resource library. A lot of free information there to help you out. I like to tell designers that we talk to, whether you work with us or not, we have information on our site or in the book that will help you grow now. Feel free to reach out to us. We are here to help. We offer a lot of the services that you need in terms of web development, website enhancement, search engine optimization, social media, pay-per-click. And we also can help you out with video marketing, animation, because a lot of our staff have background in design. So we're able to help out and really understand what your issues are 
and we're able to help you take your business to the next level because we know marketing, but we also know the industry. And we combine that to help take your business to the next level. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions, whether you work with us or not. Like I said, look at our resource library and we're here to help. Next month, we're going to talk about website optimization. And we're going to talk about what are the things that we saw last year that designers were doing wrong and what you need to do to optimize your website to have success. So it's going to be a whole talk on website optimization. Be there next month. And we hope to see you all here next month on our webinar of the month. Have a good day.